Once upon a time in South America, a country called Venezuela had transformed from a modest nation into one of the richest countries in the world thanks to the discovery of oil. The high demand for Venezuela's oil made them the number one exporter of oil worldwide, greatly improving their economy. However, it was a risk to rely so much on one thing to generate money for their country. And as other countries around the world began to discover and sell oil for themselves, the demand for Venezuela's oil began to decrease, leading to economic downturn. Concerned about the country losing money, the government instructed their banks to just print more. But as you may know, the more you have of something, the less valuable it becomes. As a result, the prices of goods such as food and clothing skyrocketed, making everyone's money virtually worthless. Venezuela had plunged into hyperinflation. What's up guys, it's me Mr. Bradley and in today's video we're learning about inflation and hyperinflation but before we begin make sure to hit that subscribe button and get ready to do the starter questions on your screen right now. Money's value can be determined by the things that we can buy with it. For example, one dollar is normally said to have a small value because it can only buy us small things like a banana or a chocolate bar. Who would have thought? However, one million dollars is said to have a high value because it can buy us bigger things like a car or a house or a luxurious yacht. A man can dream. And you would think that it would be that way for the end of time, but the value of money actually changes over time. In the 1950s, a house in the UK averaged a price of a mere £2,000. And by the 90s, the average price of a house had climbed up to 60 to 70,000 pounds. And in 2023, the average price of a house had soared to 288,000 pounds. <laughs> this is called inflation. So why does inflation happen? Well, it can happen for many reasons. Pause for dramatic effect. Such as natural disasters, war, political events, corruption, poor decisions by banks or leaders, supply chains being affected, running out of resources, discovering more resources, workers, striking, disease, emigration, immigration, changes in population, and more. But to put it more simply, it can largely boil down to something called supply and demand. Let's start with demand. Imagine you went to a school where nobody had heard of Pokemon cards except for you. Awkward! Chances are Pokemon cards would not be very popular if nobody had heard of them and so maybe shops in the area would not be selling Pokemon cards for a very high price because, well, no kids are buying them. They haven't heard of it. So, you decided the only way you're going to start pushing products is to do a little bit of hustling. First order of business is to start talking to kids in the playground. You start with Tiny Tim, easy to convince, and a loyal alley. Next, you strike a deal with Rich Rick and Noah Guy Nick. Ten of your cards in return for their influence and strategies and necessary sacrifice. With things now underway, interest in Pokemon cards are growing, so you're gonna need some muscle. You kind of bullies trying to steal your product. You hire tough guy Tony. By now, Pokemon cards are well and truly circulating, but there's always a risk of the fuzz confiscating the product. That's why you start greasing a few pams like Telltale Terry. And if that doesn't work, you've always got Tony to offer them a knuckle sandwich. And just like that, Pokemon cards are now the most valuable commodity the school has ever seen. And you've got the best supply in the market. Mission complete. This kind of explains how an increase in demand leads to an increase in value. Now let's take supply for an example. Supply is all about how many there are of something. Taking the example of Pokemon cards a step further, if you've ever played Pokemon cards, you would know that in every pack, there is a small chance that you will find a very rare, shiny Pokemon card. Because there is less of these beautiful, shiny Pokemon cards, they are said to be of greater value. Really enjoying the second camera, hello. They might be so valuable that your friends would be willing to trade two, three, four, maybe even five of their Pokemon cards just to get their grubby hands 
on one of your shiny Pokemon cards. You ain't getting the cards! As a result, because there is a smaller supply of those shiny rare Pokemon cards, we would say they would be of a greater value. Now, supply and demand play a very important role in inflation. An increase in demand means more people want that thing. Take my money! We'll take the lot! And so the sellers normally put their prices up because they realize they can make more money. Thanks a lot. Similarly, a decrease in supply also can cause prices to go up. Once sellers realize that there's less of something going around that people want, they realize it becomes more valuable and so they increase their prices to make more money. Again, thanks. I guess that explains inflation to an extent and why prices go up and down, but is it me or do prices just seem to be going up over time? Is it just me, huh? But if you thought that, you wouldn't really be wrong. So why is that? Well, it's probably largely due to our growing population. As our population continues to grow day by day, of course, so does the demand for things that pretty much every human wants, such as food, clothing, a vehicle to drive, and a house to live in. To explain why the cost of things generally continue to go up as the years go by and will continue to do so. So if inflation naturally happens as our population continues to grow, it would suggest that inflation is actually quite normal with a healthy growing economy. And if you thought that, you would be correct. However, one question does remain. If inflation is going to continue and prices are going to keep going up, how are we going to afford anything? Well, as inflation occurs and the prices of things go up and up, it is the job of our political leaders and governments to put in monetary policies, which basically means rules for money, such as changing interest rates or increasing the minimum wage or salary that we're paid at our jobs. This will help us to afford things when they become more expensive due to inflation. The problem is that not all political leaders and governments actually make the correct decisions, Oops. some are corrupt, and some, in times when the economy is getting worse, will instruct the central banks to simply print more and more money. This may appear in the short term that things are getting better, but in the long term it actually makes things a lot worse and can change inflation into something called hyperinflation, which basically makes money completely worthless. It's therefore no surprise that countries like Venezuela, Argentina and more that have been affected by hyperinflation have started to lose trust in their central banking systems and governments and are some of the biggest adopters of cryptocurrencies which offer them more control of their own money because it doesn't involve a central banking system whatsoever. In fact, in Venezuela, over 10% of the entire population are using cryptocurrencies and many shops even accept Bitcoin as a form of payment. And so we've come to the end of our video about inflation. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of the other videos on our channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you want to become an active member and support our channel even more, you can sign up to our Patreon, helping us get one step closer to creating educational content full time. Thank you, thank you so much for everyone who comments on our videos regularly. It does help us. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.